The Australian share market has started the new year on the front foot. Darren Mara joins me now with more. Darren, what are the experts saying about trading conditions? Well, Ricardo, it was the best start to a new year since 2001 and the best one-day gain for the S&P ASX 200 since November 11, as traders returned to the share market for the first time in 2021. Analysts say shares are playing catch-up after falling 1.5% on the previous trading day as global markets rise despite climbing COVID-19 cases globally. The market is forward looking, so it's all about what things will look like in the next 12 months. And it's likely that this year is going to be a year of recovery as well as vaccine rollouts. And that hope is really leading the market to make new gains. And in the case of the US stock market, new record highs. So by the close, the 200 added 1.5%. The banks did well. Fortescue Metals hit another record high. Travel stocks didn't do well on lockdown concerns. Fund manager Link Administration was the market's biggest loser after a takeover offer fell through. One Australian dollar is buying almost 77 US cents and is lower across the other major global currencies. Well, the latest Sydney COVID outbreak is ripping billions of dollars out of the economy and has the serious potential to hinder Australia's economic recovery. Financial advisory KPMG says the outbreak on the northern beaches and subsequent lockdown cost the economy $3.2 billion in lost working hours in December. The growing clusters impacting some businesses, many of which usually see high trading volumes during summer. The combination of the Northern Beaches restrictions plus the border closures uh, and the broader restrictions that are occurring um, across Greater Sydney is likely to cost the economy about 10 to $15 billion over a four to five week period through the main summer holiday season. Um, and that's about half a percent of GDP or a little more. So look, it's, it's enough to take a lot of the momentum out of the economy entering 2021, which is not great. Mr Hogan warns a Victorian-style lockdown of Greater Sydney could lead to the start of a new recession, given the region forms about 25% of the national economy. The housing industry is hoping the current momentum in that sector won't be halted going into the new year. Melbourne was the only capital city to see an annual fall in home values, reflecting a bigger hit to the economy from the second COVID lockdown. Nationally, average home values rose 3% over the year after a third straight monthly rise in December. For Sydney siders Goran and Alexandra Serafimovsky, their year in real estate illustrates what was a remarkable industry wide performance. We were sca between the scared market and very booming market. In March, as Sydney went into lockdown, their lower North Shore house failed to sell. Home values nationwide falling more than 2% between April and September. The couple's investment unit was also impacted, like many hit by lower immigration as borders shut. We dropped the price uh, about 15%. But then lockdowns eased. Especially after the drop of interest rates, which was uh, on Melbourne Cup Day, and that really affected the market dramatically. They changed agents and sold happily before Christmas. Nationally, the volatile ride ended with average prices up 3% year on year. If you said there was going to be a pandemic and prices were going up, I would have said not in a million years. Fueling the surge, booming regional housing values as more people working from home rethought their living arrangements. Add to that low supply levels and government support and stimulus. According to some forecasts, average prices could exceed the September 2017 record by March. There's fewer people on JobKeeper than uh, the, what the budget had uh, originally forecast for. We're already starting to see more and more uh, borrowers who have been deferring their mortgages getting back into a, into a repayment schedule as well. The housing sector just one of many hoping the current outbreak eases sooner rather than later. Raina Sarampayat, SBS World News. The world's most popular digital currency, Bitcoin, has continued to surge after breaking 30,000 US dollars. There you go. For the first time at the weekend, it's been largely volatile throughout its existence and has tripled in value over 2020. Obviously, the coronavirus has wrecked havoc on markets and investors are looking for safe haven assets. 
such as gold, uh, US denominated assets and bonds, and Bitcoin included. The unregulated cryptocurrency is volatile, though, and holds a number of risks like storage. That's tonight's finance, Ricardo.